Around the world, there are animals that are more readily associated with concepts of a darker nature because of either local lore, their predatory nature, or their role in decomposition. These animals stir up associations with concepts like death, transformation, and the underworld. Let's take a look at some of these chthonic animals or animals of the underworld. Welcome back to our channel. I'm Bella Luna. I am part of a group of witches known as the Witchy Witchies. We do a podcast and we do this YouTube channel. If you're new to our channel, please stick around, check us out. If you like what you see, give us a like and subscribe and click on the notification button so you can get all of our latest and greatest videos. There are over 1400 species of bats in the world and they're integral to the pollination of many different types of plants. But bats are nocturnal mammals by nature, so they're very comfortable in the dark, dwell in caves, and mostly come out at night. Because of this, they're automatically associated with darkness. They carry a reputation in many different cultures of foretelling death. In Thailand, seeing a bat in broad daylight or around a temple means death is coming. In New Zealand, Bats are seen as connected with a local mythical bird known by the Maori people to warn of death. Like bats, there are a number of different black cat breeds worldwide. You have the Sphinx cats, Persian cats, Oriental shorthairs, Turkish Angoras, or the Bombay. Depending on the culture, black cats can have a reputation for bringing either bad or good luck. In most Western cultures, black cats tend to be related to bringing bad luck, omens, or even death. In Eastern cultures, though, they're viewed quite differently. In Japan, for example, black cats are a symbol of good luck. They've also become notoriously linked with witches. At one time, they were thought to be a witch whose shape shifted into a black cat. Many Western cultures also see black cats as synonymous with Halloween, and so are typical Halloween decor. Butterflies are widely known for their correlation with death. Their metamorphosis from caterpillars who are grounded to the earth to butterflies who can fly almost perfectly symbolizes the transition of humans becoming spirits upon death. For some, they represent the soul of a loved one who recently died. In Irish culture, butterflies are believed to be the trapped souls of the dead. In the Philippines, they're considered a warning of death. Crows and ravens are associated with death due to their feeding on dead animals. They're both often linked to battlefields, cemeteries, or other areas where you might find dead bodies. You can also see them gather in areas where animals or people are about to die. Ravens specifically are more nocturnal birds, and in Norse mythology, they're believed to guide the dead to the afterlife. Crows and ravens have been associated with dark deities across many belief systems, but their associations vary in meaning from deity to deity. The Morrigan, an Irish Celtic goddess of war, death, and rebirth, is known to shift into a crow or raven or other forms of chthonic animals. Yama, Hindu and Buddhist god of death, uses crows to deliver his messages and is commonly worshipped by putting food out for crows. Nephthys, Egyptian goddess of death and the afterlife, manifests as a crow. In some historical and even present-day artwork, it's not unusual to see her depicted as part raven. Dumavadi, Hindu goddess of the void, the place before time and the place after time ends, is another deity associated with death and transformation. She is known to ride a raven and is said to have crow-like facial features. Vultures are known to be scavengers, feeding on the dead and decaying, and so it's not surprising they're strongly associated with death and darkness. By doing this, though, they play a crucial role in maintaining the ecosystem by removing rotting, decaying flesh and bones that could be harboring diseases. Snakes can slither and slide, allowing them to fit in dark, unknown places. Many species of snakes are venomous, and some are constrictors, but both can cause death to their prey. They're also creatures naturally close to the earth, so it's easy to see their image as a powerful chthonic symbol. Depending on where in the world you look, snakes can be viewed in a negative or positive light. For example, in Egyptian art, cobras are symbolic of divine and royal wisdom, power, and knowledge. 
In China, they signify the rainbow and freedom, but generally, their reputation tends to be more so negative. There are a number of Western cultures who view snakes as a symbol of death. In the Christian Bible, snakes symbolize Satan, the enemy of God, and one that brings death, curses, and sickness. Spiders and scorpions, both eight-legged creatures, have also been tied to death in the underworld. In modern themes, the spider is often portrayed as creepy and something to be scared of, and of course, is a very common theme in Halloween decor. But spiders are another creature long associated with deities and otherworldly beings. Neith, Egyptian goddess of war, but also of creation, wisdom, and weaving, is associated with spiders and known as the weaver of destiny. She will shoot arrows at the enemies of the dead and will dress the dead with woven cloth. Ishtar, or Inanna, is a Mesopotamian and Sumerian spider goddess of war, but also of love, fertility, and wisdom. She was considered one of the most powerful deities in the Sumerian pantheon. She's actually linked to two different stories about spiders. In one version, she was said to have created the first spider, which then was told to weave her clothes. In this version, the spider is seen as a symbol of life and fertility, and its webs as symbols of Inanna's creation and power. In another version, Inanna traveled to the underworld, which displeased Ereshkigal, ruler of the underworld, so was held captive. Inanna's loyal servant, Ninshabur, went to the gods for help, and they created two creatures to rescue Inanna, the Kurgaru and the Kalaturu. They weren't successful, so they spun a web to trap Arashkigal's powers, and as they spun, they turned into the first spiders. Their webs became symbols of creation, life, and death. The spider grandmother is an important figure in the folklore of a number of Native American cultures. She's known as a creation goddess with varying mythos depending upon the culture, and is generally known to live underground. The scorpion a nocturnal creature, is associated with Sekhmet, Egyptian goddess of the dead. Muslim folk religion views the scorpion to be generally associated with evil, but at the same time can often also be regarded as a protector against evil. In the mythology of the Kalasha, a people of Indo-European descent located in Central Asia, scorpions are known to be underworld creatures and are often depicted on pillars leading to the underworld. The rat is another common nocturnal creature. In a number of cultures, they're believed to have a link to the underground, the darkness, and all that usually comes to mind. Basically, filth, the unknown, and evil. So, for many, the rat is seen as a symbol of the powers of darkness, death, decay, and the underworld. For example, in Christianity, they became associated with the Judeo-Christian version of demons. Many Asian cultures, however, view the rat in a positive light. In Japan and Korea, the rat is the companion to the god of good fortune. So when no rats in the house are seen, that's a bad thing. In South China, the rat is celebrated as the mythical bringer of rice to humanity. The ram to the Celts was considered to be connected with the other worlds. It was also attributed to war deities. The Celtic god Kernunos, god of the underworld, is often depicted with a ram. In the Islamic view of the afterlife, death is symbolized by a black and white ram. Dogs are often depicted as guardians of death realms and are also associated with deities of death. Hecate, for example, the Greek goddess of death, the crossroads, and of magic or witchcraft, is routinely pictured accompanying by howling dogs. The black dog, in particular, is associated with death and sometimes was seen as an omen of death or as servants of the devil. Dogs of death are sometimes depicted as hellhounds, tasked with tracking down the dead to bring them to the underworld. One of the most well-known examples of a hellhound is Cerberus, the Hound of Hades. Cerberus guards the gates of the underworld and keeps the dead from leaving. Dogs can also be seen by some cultures as psychopomps, those who guide the recently deceased to the underworld. The Egyptian god Anubis was depicted with the head of a dog and was believed to be the protector of the dead. He stood with the dead after judgment, helping with their passage to the next world. Finally, we have the worm. Historically, worms referred to any crawling creature with long bodies and no legs. 
the word worm was a general term for anything from earthworms and maggots to snakes and dragons. Worms have various symbolism in different cultures. In the Christian Bible, worms are sometimes depicted as creatures of hell that bring eternal death. In many literary works, the worm has been used as a symbol representing man's death and mortality. There are many more creatures that are linked with death in the underworld, depending on the belief system or culture. Take the time to explore your own ancestral and local belief systems to see what different creatures symbolize dark natures, death, and the underworld. Think of their symbolism and how you can incorporate them into your practice during this time of the dark half of the year in the Northern Hemisphere. As always, thank you for joining us. Check out our other videos in this year and previous year's October Witching series. And until next time, we will see you on the next video.